Right now, it's seven minutes past the hour of 11 o'clock and it's time for our dog spot with Gal Skinner from the Dog Emporium on the EM125 at Porsches. And she's here with Assistance Dog Key, who's undergoing treatment, tra- training, and the little terrorist, Zara, the baby Yorkshire Terrier, who's causing havoc in the studio. But good morning to all three of you. Good morning, Owen. Yeah, well, she's <laughs> causing a bit of havoc this morning. So, we were talking, I think, last week, the importance of grooming. And um, you do an awful lot of this, I know, in the shop. And you were also talking about educational products for dogs. What are these? Yeah, we've got a, a lot of educational toys in at the moment uh, for dogs, which are brilliant because you get to interact with them. Um, and the dog gets to use his brain. So there's games from different levels. Um, they start off with level one, um, which Zaz actually able to do, believe it or not. Um, and you hide a treat in them, and then they have to figure out how to get the treats out of them. Yeah, and it also keeps them quiet. Now, we used to do this when we first take a dog in, and you have to leave them on their own for a period of time, is get these Kongs, I think they were called. Yeah, the Kongs are brilliant. Um, if the dogs are getting bored or they're having to spend a bit of time at home or you want to get them used to staying alone uh, for short times, then the Kong is brilliant, and you can put a little bit of peanut butter at the bottom, at the small end, and then um, fill it up with the dry dog food or bits of chicken or whatever you like, and add a little bit of um, meat stock and then I freeze them, um, and then they last oh. a lot longer, yeah. Really? And then, of course, by the time they've w- rolled it around and fiddled it to get the treats out, they've yeah. forgotten what the time is. Exactly, yeah. Is it not also true, um, and I believe this to be true, that they have no preconception of time? So you could be away 10 minutes, you could be away 10 hours, and it seems like they have no... Yeah, they don't. Um, like, we, we know that we've been away for an hour or we know we've been away for a week. A dog doesn't realise this. So if you're going away for a week and you're coming back, it's the exact same to the dog as if you've just gone down the road shopping. That's why they're so energetic at the door and things like that. But um, there are a lot of training things that you can do to stop that because a lot of that is anxiety. Yeah. Um, and these things, to keep them amused... Is uh, because they. Th- this is when people come back and they've torn all the cushions up or whatever. It's only because they are anxious, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of it's anxiety. It's also boredom. Um, and if they're not being, you know, treated properly, not in the sense of being abused, but um, dogs communicate differently to 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 what people do. So if you coming in and out of the house, the best thing to do is actually ignore the dog and let the dog go and settle down first before you greet it um, so that you're not rewarding it in a very anxious state or very hyper-excited state. Now, we've been following you and the training you've been giving to Key, the collie, as an assistance dog. Um, coming up due for an exam or something as soon, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's got his first lot of exams now on Wednesday, um, so we're working pretty much flat out for that. And he's got to do his public access exams, which will be, I think, in Faro at the shopping centre. Um, and he's got to go through a whole course right. of things, right from coming out of the vehicle to walking through the shopping centre to doing a downstay in the shopping centre. And as you can hear, he doesn't want to do it. No, he, he, he doesn't want to go there. No, he doesn't. He's um, objecting to all the homework, I think. Yeah, well, he, yeah. he likes it here, though, doesn't he? And he, for some reason, he, he's taken a liking to Paul. Yeah, and the little one has too. Yeah, they must have uh, must be related. Now, um, talking about rehabilitating dogs, are you involved in that now? We are. We're seeing a, a lot of dogs coming into us for training, and also people are ringing up and they've got dogs with behavioural problems. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we've got dogs with behavioural problems here now. <laughs> Go get them excited, Paul. <laughs> And um, so what, I, what we're doing is I have a pack of dogs at home. Normally there's six and sometimes there's up to ten different dogs, all with different personality traits. So what I do is take the dogs home, um, which are showing problems, either aggression problems to other dogs or aggression problems to people. And they come and stay with me for about three days. And I introduce them slowly to the pack um, so that they get to meet dogs with different personalities and they get to learn to be a dog. Um, And we're having some really, really good results with this where the dogs are going home and they're understanding 
different things and then obviously training the owners to train the dogs and to continue at home yeah because essentially they are pack animals anyway aren't they yeah they are and um there's a lot of dogs that you know in most countries where people have one dog and they're living alone and they're not getting to be dogs socialized if you like. yeah, yeah. It's all down to socialization and, and people think, oh, but he, he likes to play with a ball and, oh, he sees, you know, Fred the dog down the road once a week, but it's actually not enough for them. Well, if people don't want to go that far by letting their dogs come to you for two or three days, you're also doing these socialization walks, aren't you? Or, yeah, we're doing... When are you doing that? On a Thursday, was it's it? It's a Thursday afternoon yeah. at four o'clock, yeah. We decided to wait till it's not so hot um, yeah. and it seems to be perfect time and we do a little bit of work. First, we all meet together in the shop and then we go from the shop um, a little bit through the town so we do some heel work on the lead and see you know we can see which dogs have problems which dogs need a little bit of work on what, whichever behavior and then we go to the church we take all the dogs to church which is always a good laugh um, we do a few exercises in the church grounds and then from there we go out into the country and this week we had dogs that were off leash and some had to remain on leash and then we did some nose work with them we introduced them to this so they're getting to use their actual natural abilities in finding pieces of meat and things that we put around for them well it sounds like they have fun yours obviously do and you know i get a sneaky suspicion you get a lot of fun out of doing what you're doing yeah it's absolutely brilliant i love working with dogs and they're, they're just amazing they're all such different characters and to watch the different personalities and to see how they change from you know coming into the shop as a really terrified dog or a really aggressive dog and uh, through the weeks to see them actually improving we've got one dog who when she first came to us she wouldn't lie down it was just impossible the dog would not down um and she's been to us now for three lessons and now she downs when the people ask them to so it's absolutely brilliant yeah well done well keep up the good work anybody listening if you've got any canine queries well gal can be located at the dog emporium shop on the em125 at porsches or we invite you to check out their website it's all the w's dogemporium.pt thanks a lot gal and we'll have you around next time